In the last part we examined some of the problems with the mainstream model of the Sun. One of the key concepts underpinning Robitaille's model is that of the entire Sun being composed of liquid metallic hydrogen. What is this and what state is the research at? Let's dive in and find out more. Hydrogen is the most abundant atom in the visible universe. In its molecular state it contains just one electron and one proton. In 1935 Eugene Wigner, who was one of the founders of modern solid state physics and his colleague Hillard Huntington, first tried to predict what would happen to hydrogen if it were compressed to a very high density. Based on a nearly free electron picture they predicted that above 25 gigapascals hydrogen would enter a metallic state. This value turns out to be quite far off as hydrogen appears to be far more compressible than they first thought. In modern experiments they were able to subject hydrogen to pressures of about 400 gigapascals which is an almost 16 fold increase compared to what Wigner and Huntington had predicted. At these pressures some very exciting phenomena have been observed but the metallic state remains elusive. As the research continued over the years, a better picture started to emerge about the conditions needed to turn a molecular gas into the lightest metal. While experimentalists are tantalizingly close to the pressures required, theory is also moving beyond current static pressure limits and has predicted that ground state hydrogen, so at zero Kelvin, would be an entirely new state of matter, which could be superfluid or superconducting. Currently five solid phases of hydrogen are known and most importantly to the discussion it is unique amongst the stable elements in that full structural information is absent for all of them which prevents modelling and or prediction of hydrogen behaviour at high pressures. Low temperature solidification of hydrogen was first achieved in 1899. An alternative approach is through compression at a temperature of 300 Kelvin. The solid state under these conditions is phase 1. This phase is characterized by quantum spherically disordered molecules arranged in a hexagonal close packed structure. It is an insulator and shows remarkable pressure stability from 5.5 gigapascals all the way up to 230 gigapascals. Phase 2 is known as the broken symmetry phase and is formed by compressing phase 1 at pressures above 60 gigapascals but at temperatures below 100 Kelvin. This phase is thought to have ordered molecules but the nature of their arrangement and their shape is unknown. Phase 3 is obtained by compressing phase 2 at 150 gigapascals and again below 100 Kelvin. Nothing so far is known about its structure but is thought to have a hexagonal close packed lattice with unusually intense infrared activity. It took almost 25 years from the discovery of phase 2 to the observations of phase 4 of hydrogen. If phase 2 is compressed at 300 Kelvin, it transforms into phase 4 at around 230 gigapascals. Even though the structure of phase 4 is not known, on the basis of Raman spectroscopy combined, it is speculated that it is made from alternating layers consisting of 6 atom rings and free like molecules. If phase 4 is compressed further it gradually transforms into phase 5. This phase has been speculated to be a partially purely atomic state and a precursor to a fully metallic and atomic state. In 1989 a group of scientists claimed to have created metallic hydrogen for the first time. On the basis of the dimming of Raman signed and increased absorption by the sample they concluded that they had reached the metallic state. Soon others claimed similar successes. However, with improvements in experimental methods, it became apparent that the observed effects could be explained by the loss of hydrogen at high pressures and by increased fluorescence from the diamonds in the diamond anvil being mistaken for closing of the band gap. Wind forward 20 years and there was another claim of metallization and now based on Raman spectroscopy and direct electrical measurements of resistance. Here they claimed that they had observed liquid atomic metallic hydrogen at above 600 gigapascals. Also immediately after publishing their paper it was shown that hydrogen remains in a mixed molecular and atomic semiconducting solid phase 
up to at least 350 gigapascals at 300 Kelvin, transforming back to phase 3 at lower temperatures. Once more, the loss of Raman signal and the drop in sample resistance were explained by the loss of hydrogen and the collapse of the sample chamber. More and more groups started to make similar claims, including a recent paper by the Harvard group who claimed that metallic hydrogen at 500 gigapascals would be a good candidate for rocket fuel. Their paper title was Observations of Wigner Huntington Transition to Metallic Hydrogen. This, by itself, is a totally misleading title, as the paper had not demonstrated either a transition between molecular state or atomic state, which is what the Wigner Huntington transition is. On top of this, the 500 gigapascals is currently widely believed to be outside of the range of the standard diamond anvil cell technique, and it is not accompanied by any scientific evidence. It is important to understand that at the moment there is no general agreement in the high pressure hydrogen research community on the behavior of hydrogen above 250 gigapascals. Even the simple phase diagram is hotly debated and there is clear disagreement as to whether the metallic state was reached and at what pressures. To date, none of the experiments have produced reproducible results and this lack of reproducibility also leads to inconsistencies in the literature. In all the experiments, whenever the pressure is removed, the material changed state back upwards along the phase diagram. One aspect of metallic hydrogen that is also worth considering is whether or not it is metastable. This means that if you can create this shape and then remove the pressure, it would remain in this structure. This obviously got many people very excited about metallic hydrogen. If it is a superconductor and metastable, could it represent the first real room temperature superconductor? It may also represent a more efficient way of storing hydrogen as a fuel for rockets. It is important to realize that there are a number of problems that must be answered. What is the minimal energy crystal structure? The proof of stability, the analysis of the relationship between the ground state and the metastable state structure and the molecular phase. And lastly, a determination of the lifetime of this phase. In a recent paper, they looked to analyze this question through a theoretical approach. Their conclusions were that at relatively high pressures, so above 300 gigapascals, you would indeed see metallic hydrogen, but as the pressure decreased, the structure would switch back to a molecular one. Below 200 gigapascals, metallic hydrogen had no region of stability. Now, I'm not aware of any research examining if a liquid metallic hydrogen is metastable, but given the theoretical very limited range of metastability in solid metallic hydrogen, it is doubtful that it exists, but it is theoretically possible. In the next part, we will dive into the nuts and bolts of the actual model, and then I will discuss my thoughts on the model. As always, be brave, be curious. The truth is waiting for us. Until next time.